Well guys, it's official. Inside Out 2 is now officially the highest grossing Pixar movie of all time, surpassing 2018's Incredibles 2, and it could very well become the highest grossing animated movie of all time. A title that currently belongs to the 2019 remake of The Lion King. Now I have gone on before about the success of this movie and how it makes me concerned for Pixar's future. To give a quick recap, Inside Out 2 is Pixar's first sequel since Toy Story 4 all the way back in 2019, which also stood as their last successful movie in a while. Throughout the early 2020s, Pixar would put out original movies, original storylines, original ideas, etc. However, these movies would end up being either box office flops or direct-to-Disney Plus movies, as a result of the pandemic affecting 4 of these six movies. And so here we are with Inside Out 2, and it's their first successful movie in years, and god damn is it a successful movie. Again, highest grossing Pixar movie of all time, one of the highest grossing animated movies of all time, and it could very easily become the highest grossing animated movie of all time. The main reason I was concerned about this is because Pixar could potentially get the wrong idea from this movie's success. They could think that we, the audience, don't want any more original movies from them, and we just want more and more sequels from them. Pixar in the 2000s used to be a unique, innovative animation studio, but now it's just, they have to rely on sequels now to their already existing movies. And the success of this movie makes me concerned that we will be getting a lot of Pixar sequels in the future. I mean, we already got Toy Story 5 coming out in 2026, for God's sake. Allegedly, we are getting Finding Nemo 3 and The Incredibles 3. Emphasis on allegedly, those are just rumored and nothing else and hopefully those end up being the only Pixar sequels we get. Now something I want to bring up that I'm sure a lot of people would be wondering when they watched my previous two videos on Inside Out 2 is why am I okay with other animation studios making sequels but I'm not okay with Pixar making sequels specifically. I don't complain about DreamWorks making sequels or Illumination making sequels. No, it's Pixar making sequels that I have a problem with. Well, you see, there's a couple differences between these three studios. I'll start off with Pixar versus DreamWorks in this case. As most of you probably know, no, Shrek 5 has finally been announced after years of waiting for it, and it's coming out in the summer of 2026 alongside Toy Story 5. There's been a debate going around about why people are excited for Shrek 5, but then Toy Story 5, they look at it and they're like, oh, we don't need this, it ended perfectly with the third movie. Some people argue that Shrek Forever After was a good conclusion to the series. And so it's like, why are people okay with DreamWorks making sequels? sequels, but they're not okay with Pixar making sequels. Well, you see, there's a couple differences. Number one, DreamWorks sequels are often better than Pixar sequels. Besides Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3, there is not a single Pixar sequel that comes close to being as good as Shrek 2. And number two, with DreamWorks, there's more of a balance between original movies and sequels. I know it's not fair for me to compare the two because DreamWorks puts out far more movies when compared to Pixar, but DreamWorks DreamWorks put out 19 movies in the 2010s, and of these 19 movies, 11 of them are original. The remaining 8 movies are sequels, or spin-offs in the case of Puss in Boots and Penguins of Madagascar. Some of you could argue that these original movies aren't actually all that original. Stuff like How to Train Your Dragon, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, Captain Underpants, they're all based on existing properties. Mr. Peabody and Sherman is based on an old cartoon, for example. Captain Underpants and How to Train Your Dragon are based on books, that sort of thing. And yeah, okay, I'll admit, that's a fair point, you got me there. But for the sake of making things easier, I'm just gonna go and say that in this instance, original movie means it's not a sequel. Even if it's adapted from an already existing thing, it still qualifies as being original for this instance, for this case. Furthermore, the reason why people are okay with 
Shrek 5, but they're not okay with Toy Story 5, is because Toy Story ended perfectly in 2010 with Toy Story 3. I see a lot of people say that Shrek Forever After was the perfect ending to the series, and yeah, I could see that, but I don't know, it doesn't really have that conclusive feel to it. I get that it was marketed that way, that yeah, this is the final chapter of the Shrek series, but it didn't 100% have that finale feel, that conclusive feel. It felt like there were still other adventures that Shrek and Donkey and Fiona and whatever could go on after this movie. Toy Story 3, in contrast, 100% felt like a finale to the Toy Story series. You watch that ending scene where Andy gives away all of his toys and you're like, how in the hell are they gonna make a fourth movie? And then lo and behold, they somehow find a way to make a fourth movie. And then that one also has a conclusive feel to it. It's not as well executed as Toy Story 3, of course, but it still has that conclusive feel. Woody decides to split up from the rest of the toys and go on his own way. It's not as good of a finale as Toy Story 3 was, but it was a finale nonetheless. It did have that conclusive feel. So it just makes you wonder, how in the hell are they going to make a Toy Story 5 work? That's the question. The one thing I hope for with Shrek 5 is that it's not just nostalgia bait or anything like that. I hope they have like a new original villain in it instead of being like, oh, Lord Farquaad is back, Prince Charming is back, etc. I hope they actually go with something different, something to help spice up this franchise after over 10 years of being dormant, but we have no way of knowing until we get much closer to the release of the movie. Now, when it comes to Illumination, some of you could be wondering why am I not complaining about Illumination making tons of sequels? I I mean, very recently, they just put out the fourth, technically sixth, Despicable Me movie. I watched it, and, well, to be honest, I don't know what else I was expecting out of it. It's kind of what you would expect out of a fourth, technically sixth, Despicable Me movie released in 2024. It exists, I guess, which is the same thing you could say for a lot of Illumination movies. But then not only that, but you also have, like, Minions 3 is coming out in 2027, apparently. Currently. Mario Movie 2 is coming out in 2026, and even though neither one has been announced yet, I know for a fact that Sing 3 and Secret Life of Pets 3 are inevitable. Despicable Me 5 could potentially end up happening as well, for all we know. Compared to Pixar, Illumination feels even more reliant on sequels when compared to original movies. Illumination has currently put out 15 movies, and of these 15 movies, only only five of them are completely original. Three of them are based on existing properties, and the rest are all sequels, or prequels in the case of the Minion series. Now, the reason why I don't criticize Illumination for this as much as I do Pixar is because, well, they're f***ing Illumination. They don't care about making, like, a cinematic masterpiece or anything like that. There has to come a point in time where you just accept, yeah, okay, Illumination is just gonna make safe slop for kids. And that's fine. I guess. Illumination never once in their entire existence had the potential to become the next Pixar. They weren't meant to be the next Pixar. They didn't set out to become the next Pixar. Even with the one great movie that they put out, the first Despicable Me, they never set out to make the next Up, the next Wall-E, the next Incredibles, nothing like that. Pixar's golden age lasted from 1995 to 2010. Illumination's golden age lasted from 2010 to 2010. That period of time where Illumination was a great animation studio that made great animated movies began and ended with the first Despicable Me. I've mentioned this before in an earlier video, but Illumination has a formula. It might not be a good formula, not to us at least, but it's a successful formula. Even though these movies aren't all that good, they're still massively successful at the box office. Despicable Me 4 was quite frankly an unnecessary movie, and I thought it was just, I mean again, I don't know what else you would 
expect from a fourth Despicable Me movie in 2024, but it will inevitably be a success at the box office. Because it's Despicable Me. Pixar in their golden age didn't just make great animated movies, they made masterpieces, okay? The way that I look at it, and I apologize if this comes off as pretentious, but there are good animated movies, and then there are animated movies that f show you what animation is capable of as an art form, and Pixar's Golden Age material fits perfectly into the latter category. Meanwhile, their modern day stuff falls into the former category. And if they get the wrong idea from Inside Out 2's success, we're gonna get even more Pixar movies that fall into the former category. I see a lot of people celebrate Inside Out 2's box office success, claiming that like it's a return to form for Pixar, are, but like, I don't know if this is something we should really be celebrating. Right now, we're celebrating the success of this movie, claiming it to be a return to form for Pixar, but in a few years, when we start getting millions and millions of Cars and Toy Story sequels, we're gonna look back on this movie's success, and we're gonna wish it wasn't that successful. I've seen people say that they hope this movie surpasses the Lion King remake as the highest grossing animated movie of all time, and yeah, I guess that's that would be an upgrade, it'll be an improvement, I'll admit it. But I don't know, I would rather have the highest grossing animated movie of all time be an original movie. I'm not even gonna lie, it would be really funny to me if this ends up being like a miniature version of Avatar or something, where it's like, it's the highest grossing animated movie of all time, but it leaves behind no impact at all on film history or animation history or pop culture, nothing like that. I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being like Frozen 2, you know? Like, like what the f*** was up with Frozen Frozen 2, honestly. Sometimes I forget, oh yeah, Frozen 2 happened, they made Frozen 2 a few years ago, and it's like I forget it happens because I see literally no one acknowledge its existence at all. This movie made a lot of money at the box office, and again, it stands as the last successful movie in the Disney canon until Moana 2 inevitably makes a lot of money based on the fact that it's a sequel, but like I see no one talk about this movie, I see no one acknowledge its existence, and like on the rare instance instances where I see people talk about it, it's never in a positive light. It's in a mixed to negative light. I never see anyone say that they love this movie or anything like that. It just didn't have the same longevity that the first Frozen had. The first Frozen, I cannot deny, that was a f***ing moment in cinema history right there. Frozen was an event. Frozen 2 was just a thing that happened. And so it's just really weird to me how Frozen 2 came and went and it's like no one even acknowledges its existence. Maybe it's because it came out in late 2019, shortly before the pandemic, I don't know, but it made a lot of money at the box office. If you don't want to count the Lion King remake because you think it's live action, even though it's 99% photorealistic CGI, then that would make this the highest grossing animated movie of all time. And it's just like with Avatar. It's the highest grossing animated movie of all time, but nobody cares about it. It's left behind zero impact on film history, animation history, or pop culture. None of the songs in this movie left behind the same lasting impact that Let It Go or Do You Wanna Build a Snowman had from the first movie, which is far from a bad thing, don't get me wrong. That is a great thing that the songs from Frozen 2 never took off. Thank God for that. But I can very easily see Inside Out 2 having the same thing. It becomes the highest grossing animated movie of all time, but then it's like, like no one cares about it. The only sort of impact that it could leave behind would be it would negatively impact Pixar's future because its success could make them think, oh, the audience wants more sequels, they don't want any more original movies. This has nothing to do with my thoughts on the movie itself. Even if I thought the movie was a 10 out of 10 masterpiece, I would still be concerned by its success, simply because Pixar could get the wrong idea from it. As it stands, where I think the movie is good, but unremarkable and kind of unnecessary in a way, I wouldn't be against this movie being Pixar's highest grossing animated movie of all time, and the highest grossing animated movie in general if it weren't for the fact that their original movies would all flop or end up as Disney Plus originals. I don't know, okay, I just wanted to make this quick video going over this. Inside Out 2 is now officially Pixar's highest grossing movie, in addition to being the highest grossing movie of 2024, and it
it could very easily become the highest grossing animated movie of all time, and that makes me greatly concerned for Pixar's future. This is most likely going to be the final video I make on this topic, as I don't know what else I could add to the table when it comes to discussing this. If this movie ends up becoming the highest grossing animated movie of all time, I'm probably not going to make an update video on it, because I don't see any reason to do that. As such, this is very likely going to be my last video going over the whole Inside Out 2 stuff and how its success could negatively affect Pixar. Anyways, that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to like, and if you're new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing as it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you everyone for watching this video, and I will see you all next time. Adios.